Well, as Russian forces advance into the Ukrainian city of Sverdonetsk, there are fears the entire Luhansk region could fall into Russian hands. Well, I want to speak to someone front and center of Ukraine's defense strategy. Yuri Sak is a top advisor to Ukraine's defense minister who is in the west of Ukraine right now. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you for inviting me. So you know more about what's happening on the battlefield than most. Uh, can you talk to us about the battle for Severodonetsk? Uh, it seems to be the epicenter of, of the fighting in the Donbass region right now, the last major Ukrainian stronghold. Does Russia have the upper hand here? Well, the battle uh, for Severodonetsk, um, as a battle for the Luhansk region in general in the east of Ukraine, um, is something that we have been saying about for a long time. So this battle for Donbass, it began over three weeks ago. And of course, um, against the background of Russia's inability to achieve any significant major uh, military success prior to that, you know, Ukrainian armed forces have been able to uh, throw back Russians from the Kiev and Kiev region from cities like Chernihiv, most recently, Ukrainian armed forces have had success in, uh, in and around uh, the second largest city of Ukraine, Kharkiv. So, of course, um, being unable to do anything in those parts and achieve their military goal, Russians have thrown everything they have on Donbass. And uh, at the moment, the fighting there is very severe and intense. As our president, Mr. Zelensky, said um, some days ago, that on some days, the casualties that the Ukrainian army is sustaining reach up to 100 soldiers and 400 uh, wounded. And these are staggering figures, of course. Uh, and they, um, they, they cannot be explained. But what we can state with certainty is that Russians are using every single type of heavy weaponry they have to gain the upper hand, like you said. They are throwing countless um air bombs they are throwing missile uh missiles they are uh, shelling those uh, parts of eastern ukraine with heavy artillery they are hitting of course civilian residential areas they're killing civilian people so this is a very very intense fight and this is why ukraine has been requesting for uh, for a long time now uh, ukraine has been requesting more military support in the form of heavy weaponry because uh, at the moment, there is a very obvious imbalance when it comes to heavy weaponry in the East. And I want to ask you a little bit more about the weaponry, because the U.S. says it won't supply Ukraine with uh, the long-range rockets because it fears it could escalate the war uh, if Ukraine can fire into Russia. Do you agree with that assessment? Is that the risk? Well, look, first of all, I would like to thank, on behalf of Ukrainian Minister of Defense, on behalf of Ukrainian people, I would like to thank the American people, the American administration, um, for the support that we have been receiving from the very beginning uh, of this uh, aggression against Ukraine. Uh, we already received a lot of support, uh, and, for example, the 155 millimeter. Uh, cannons, uh, the so-called M777, uh, are already successfully used on the battlefield, and of course they're a great help to the Ukrainian army. As for the current stage of this war, uh, of course we have said many times that we need the multi-launch rocket systems, the so-called MLRS, and we are very hopeful that in the nearest future uh, our partners, including the U.S., will begin uh, supplying them to Ukraine. And I can assure you that Ukraine has no intention to use them other than for defense of our territories and for the deoccupation of our territories. We are a peaceful nation. A nation. We have not waged any war against any of our neighbors in centuries. So from this perspective, the only reason for which we need the MLRS systems, as well as other types of hybrid weaponry, uh, is of course to defend our land, to liberate our cities, to protect our citizens and to protect the future of Europe. 
And speaking of resistance, there was a, a car bomb detonated in the Russian-occupied city of Melitopol in southern Ukraine. Uh, talk to us about the resistance, because a, a former mayor there said the ground will burn until Russians leave. Uh, should Russia be concerned about this resistance in cities that they occupy? We have seen from the very first days of this temporary occupation of the southern cities of Ukraine, such as Kherson, such as Melitopol, we have seen that the Ukrainian people who are natives there, the local populations, they are resisting very fiercely the occupation. They do not want to live under Russia, and they are convinced, just as we are, that sooner or later, Ukraine will, Ukrainian army will liberate those cities. And of course, they're putting up uh, resistance. And uh, it was only yesterday that the people of Melitopol, the civilians, held a peaceful demonstration in the center of Melitopol, and they were protesting against the occupiers, against the aggression, because everybody saw what the Russian army stands for. This is a genocidal army of war criminals who continue to terrorize our land, to terrorize our country, as well as the rest of Europe and the rest of the world. So it is very logical that there is resistance in those parts of Ukraine, and uh, uh, we are convinced that we will liberate them and, you know, peace will be returned to those parts of Ukraine as well. Yuri Sak, a top advisor to Ukraine's military defense. We appreciate your time. Thanks so much for joining us. Thank you so much for inviting me. Well, still to come tonight, memorials grow as funeral services begin in Uvalde, Texas, for some of the youngest victims of last week's school shooting. We'll take you there for the latest on how the townspeople are coping.